So in the kit, we're gonna get a, a variety of, of screws and, and hardware. Uh, first, we're gonna get eight short screws. Uh, then we're gonna get a four longer screws. That's actually the screws that are gonna go through the filter and the, the plate at the same time. You'll see that shortly. And then we have four screws here. These are uh, actually Phillips heads uh, also that's used for the, on the side of the cover to hold to the ceiling. You'll get eight feet of foil tape and then extra foam um, for any uh, gaps that need to get filled up in that ceiling. So that's all including the kit along with your filter, uh, base plate, and the cover. What we'll do is we'll take these four screws down here. That like, holds this Coleman uh, assembly up. Um, and as, we'll see what we've got underneath. So now that we've removed the four screws on here and pulled this down, um, one of the things you want to look at is if you had the center divider, uh, diverter stabilizer in here. It should be there with this, with this cover. What you're going to want to do is remove these four screws then at that point, trying to keep the center baffle up in place because that does need to remain there, but this does need to come down. So we'll take that off now next. and has been taped up there, so we might have a little bit of a challenge, but let's see what happens. Not too bad. There we go, so and this remains up. This is a center baffle. Again, that separates the air from the air intake side from the supply side. You do not want mixing in here, so if taping all this up is, is a great idea, and it needs to be done, it should be done, okay? And then from here, we'll do the maintenance up inside here and uh, get this ready to uh, take the next step and install the RVAC silencer. Just gonna clean some of this stuff up. Some just can stay up here. But you can see where all the wiring comes through. Those are all holes that we wanna fix. And you can see that wire moving. It goes through to this side. So there's a hole actually right through here that can allow with the air to mix. So we get that all fixed up. So I'd like to point out a couple different things uh, as we're doing some maintenance on this and making sure everything's proper before we do install the RVAC silencer. There's a couple things we want to look for. Number one, um, these four bolts that hold the air to the roof, sometimes uh, there's some manufacturers will put springs underneath these bolts, okay, in the corners. Uh, if you have springs underneath those bolts, take one bolt out at a time, take the spring out and put the bolts back in, okay? We don't want the springs in here because what happens is the bolt stays out too far, it's too long like this. And the whole idea of the RVAC silencer is to actually fit tight to the ceiling so we don't have any air leaks between the base plate and uh, the ceiling. Uh, where there's air leaks, you have noise leaks. It's simple, okay? So what we'll do is I'll show you that these do come out all the way, and we'll watch here. You can pull that out, take the spring off, take, slide it back up, and then you can tighten it. Now, as I tighten it, uh, if you can see, it's a little harder to see, but there's gonna be little tabs up in the corner. This one here has to be yellow, I've seen gray ones, I've seen white ones. Basically what this is, is that's your um, gasket smash gauge, they call it, or thickness of the gasket. This is actually the gasket on the roof that's at the bottom of the air conditioner that seals it to the roof. You can see right here is roofing material, okay? So what we're gonna do is properly tighten this so that that gasket is the same thickness as that gauge. So now if you look, when I push on this here tab, we're the same thickness of this here. So if the gasket is taller, we tighten it. If this gasket is shorter, we basically leave it because we don't want to loosen the air conditioner on the roof and break that seal. So we're gonna start going ahead and we're gonna seal this up a little bit. This is your supply side. So this is where the air comes down from the roof through this vent here, through the squirrel cage fan. You can see here I was in turning it. And the air comes down. This will eventually be sealed up 100%. So when this creates pressure, it pushes the air through these holes here in the ceiling. As you can see, I got my hand right through here, one on each side in this case, on this RV. 
and that's where it goes into ductwork uh, in the ceiling. So what we need to do is seal all this up, except for leaving these holes open, and try to make as easy transitions as we can into those holes. We don't want any restrictions there. That really does dramatically help airflow. And then we're done with this side, we're gonna come on the air intake side, and we're gonna repair all these wires. Uh, you can see where all the wires come through, there's holes, okay? And we're gonna fix all this up here also. So in the kit that's supplied from Wacko Products with the RVAC silencer, every kit does come with eight feet of foil tape to do some minor repair work. Uh, primarily, like for Coleman, what it's really made to do is actually to seal this center baffle into place. Bases go along the edges and get it all three sides. Uh, and then the base plates goes on, we actually do another seal there. So again, we do not want this to blow out, okay? Uh, if this is sitting off to the side like this, it does absolutely no good. So um, we'll kind of go through that a little later. I would suggest before you start the project, um, if you want to make sure that you uh, do all your repair work properly, as you see here, we got holes everywhere. We're gonna fix all this. Go to a hardware store, you can buy a large roll of HVAC foil tape, uh, one and a half or two mil. I supply a two mil, it's a little heavier. A lot of times you can't get that heavier material, but grab some of this. It's kind of like your friend, it's like duct tape. You should always have a roll with you all the time in the RV industry. So, um, so foil tape and a hammer and you're good to go to own an RV, guys. So we're just gonna come across here and just give it some rigidity a little bit. Be careful not to cut yourself. There's, this actually is pretty sharp metal in some of these areas here. And if you notice, I'm just tearing off the tape and leaving the vacuum in there rather than cutting it. This makes it a little easier. And we want now to make as good a seal as we possibly can. Take your time with this. You can spend more time with this and you actually do the install of the, the silencer itself, but this is crucial. So as we go along here, we're gonna finish this up across here and we're gonna address this area here a little later. But here's a hole right here, look at this. So I don't know if you can see my finger. That's no good. So what's happening here, this is air pressure is building here and air is actually coming out here, right here. That probably makes a whistle noise or whatever. So we're gonna fix those holes also. So right now I, just, I ran all the tape basically vertically here. Now I'm gonna run horizontally um, across just to give us some extra stability because there is pressure on this. Uh, don't be shy with the tape. Um, just make sure it's sealed well and just try to do a nice job. So just in case something comes up in here that at least you can say, boy, it looks nice and smooth. Um, that's really what you wanna have it do. And I'll finish this up. And I'm actually gonna run a piece across the top as you see here, I'm just going to cut it short pieces just to make it a little easier. And I'm going to stick it right to the bottom of the air conditioner because that's good clean metal. And we really want to get a good bond. And we'll just roll it up into here. Um, just so we get a good seal. And we just continue on and we'll do this on the back side here. So if you remember when I said I poked my finger through here, uh, I got it taped up on the inside around. But you see my finger a little bit there, right? That's the holes that are going through there. So if somehow we got to try to fix those up a little bit. So I'm just gonna throw a piece of tape across the corner for now and then try to get in the inside and get as much as we can here. Um, depending on what you do here, we, you know, we might wanna cut this off or whatever it takes so you don't see it on the outside. But I'm just gonna give it a layer and uh, get in the inside and give it a little more tape here. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna address this area here. That's where it goes into the duct work. This is a little more tricky because um, uh, we wanna tape it up and make a smooth transition as we can. So um, again, take your time, take one little piece at a time, works the best, and let's just try to, let's try to see what we can do here and make a smooth transition. So when we're done, this is gonna be the new base plate. Uh, we're actually gonna drill it right into the same holes. You can see the holes right here, they're already there. Uh, some are used, some are not. Um, and it just lines right back up, and this is where that's gonna be screwed into place right there just to make sure that the center baffle is in the correct place. Really want it right to have it right to this edge right here, because then we're gonna tape this across here. Uh, sometimes they're pushed back forward or, or back, well, either way. So we might as get that in the right place right away as we're up here fixing. So everything's kind of falls into place a little later for us. Look at the center baffle. S sometimes this is in good shape. It's, it's nice and flush with this here. Um, see how we can push it up and down. That's okay if we can push it up, uh, but sometimes it's actually cut short. So. Let me grab the foam, foam here. In the kit, I give a, some extra foam. 
And what you can actually do is peel the back on this off and just run it across. And that just fills that gap. So if it was short, I would do this, okay? And you cut that off to whatever length that they needs to be. So now, when this goes screwed up into there, uh, it actually smashes it tight and makes a really nice good seal. So, um, and when in doubt, just use it. So right here is where um, the air goes into the ceiling and goes into ductwork. So that's the hole that's, that supplies the air to all your vents in the roof. And that's where trying to make that transition is go from here all the way down and into here. So smooth this transition we possibly can. Um, again, just take it one piece at a time, work yourself across, and just do the best you can. Um, sometimes you get up there, you might have a piece of foam that's in the way or something. Uh, if you have to, if it doesn't look right, you can take in there with just a serrated uh, bread knife and just trim it a little bit if you wanted to, um, just to make that transition as smooth as possible. So here you can see we finished up taping the supply side. Remember, this is the side that creates pressure and goes into ductwork. So we created an easy transition here as much as we can um, going into the ductwork. And we got everything taped up nicely here. Uh, we did tape up the center baffle into place. Uh, so that can't move, that's nice and rigid, it's where we want it to be. Uh, we start working on the air intake side. We did get this side here uh, complete, and now we're actually going to go and work on the other side. You can see what we, we started with here with all this loose stuff. And we're going to continue to work around and uh, uh, hopefully get this uh, finished up here shortly. You do not have the foil going all the way around here. Uh, this is just fine. Uh, if you want to, you can, it doesn't hurt. Um, and we'll see as we get going here because you know you want to stick to this and the fiberglass is a little harder to stick to but this is actually bonding fairly well uh, so i may just cover this all up it doesn't hurt you just don't want to have it loose and just have it fall off that's really the main thing uh, it doesn't hurt to use extra though so one of the important things you see here i did all the wiring kind of wrapped around as much as you can just do the best you can to seal all those holes up uh, the wiring here try to tuck it just kind of push it aside a little bit if you can uh, sometimes you can zip tie these together or whatnot uh, just so it's just not dangling in here because it can actually rattle a little bit and make some noise that uh, you don't like to hear. So various Coleman units, um, they have different ceiling assemblies. There's nothing different up, up in the ceiling itself, but the covers themselves come in different sizes. Um, this particular one's just a little bit wider than uh, the silencer kit. The silencer kit is 17 by 17 inches. Uh, this is a little bit wider. I'm going to say it's probably about 18 by 18. Um, so you can see here when I put put it up here, it's just a little bit bigger. Uh, and what happens is you can have um, these four screw holes just show just a little bit. Now I had some people they said that's fine. I have an optional trim that by the way the cover is. We'll just step in that real shortly. And some people say, well that's fine. I can just take these screws out, take the cover down, and just put the screws back in these holes that you can see right here, and they're okay with it. Uh, in this case scenario here, this. Uh, a couple here actually took and they painted their ceiling and tried to renew the inside of the RV when it looks really nice. Um, but what happens is if I, we just put this on like this and you put the cover on, you'll see that you have a gap here a little bit and you're going to see that paint line. So uh, I do have an optional trim that is available and that is 20 by 20 inches. So installation is really easy. It actually uh, just sandwiches between that base plate and the ceiling just like this, and lines up with the holes. Get them lined up. And this goes up like this here. And that's where you just run your holes, screws right in, and it just sandwiches. You can see that cleans that right up. Uh, so now when we put our cover on, we cover up all that paint line, we cover up the holes in our ceiling, and that's why it's an optional piece. Some people plain just don't need it, some just don't want it. That's why we have an option. So um, one thing I, I should mention too is we do use ABS plastic. Um, you can go ahead and go to any hardware store, grab a can of uh, plastic paint and paint this any color you want. So we are using the existing holes. Uh, some are used, some are not. Uh, in this case here, I believe this one and this one are used uh, in here because that's where uh, there was a bracket that went across we took off originally. Um, in this case here, there's another seam assembly where this hole, this hole, this hole, and this hole are used only. Um, so again, Coleman has, you know, about four different type of ceiling assemblies, so they all use different uh, holes. Um, they're already there. Uh, they're just little tiny holes if they're not been used, and if they're bigger holes, well, that's because there are screws already in them. As I was installing the base plate up here, you know, we do provide screws, and uh, I just noticed that when I was running this one screw up here, I took the base plate off just so you can see what happens. So watch between this uh, bracket and the ceiling, You'll see what happens here. Also, we can't go in. Okay, 
So what we did is there's actually a piece of metal up in the, the ceiling here uh, that's actually stopping us from putting that screw in. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take an eighth inch drill and just drill that hole so we got room to run that screw up there. So again, this is just part of the prep work just to make sure that everything is, is kosher. Uh, I'm gonna go from there. And there we go. So now we put our base on, we should be good there. And what I'm just gonna, just gonna go here and just check all the other ones right away. Sometimes there's one, there's another. So we're not holding everything all up together. If you are gonna be using a CT204 trim piece, I found the easiest way is actually put the two together and start with the longer screws. So I just put the longer screws in. Again, that's where the filter goes. So if you lay the filter on here, you see that the holes here, here, and here, and here are used for the longer screws. So I'm just gonna start it like this. And you can also look through the hole, it helps you line everything up. So as you go up, you can see it makes it really easy to get it started. So just get one started on that side. Go to the other side and just repeat. Now you're basically hands-free. At that point, I do the other two longer ones. You can pull it down a little bit and you can see up in there and we're just gonna get them all started. So we're gonna go around, get all these holes, all these screws started. Okay, now we're gonna go to the short ones. So right now, uh, we did get the long ones in. We're gonna, just about gonna get into the short ones. But if you notice, when I push up here, these are kind of stuck. So take and push this up. You get hooked on the threads a little bit. Just makes it a little easier. Um, now we can go ahead and we can get these other screws in. Uh, be patient. Sometimes they're not perfectly right in the hole. Um, so you get to tip the screw just a little bit one way or the other. Again, we're not tightening them. We're just going to get them started. And just work yourself around. Now that all the screws are started again, come around, just make sure it's pushed up, okay? So, yeah, so as you go through, now you can tighten these screws up all the way. Just draw them up. Now we are using a drill here. Um, the drill I'm using just for speed for the video. Really you should try to use a screwdriver uh, so you're not really cranking them too tight. I've done this a few times. Uh, so uh, you are being cautious, I am being cautious. Um, just take your time. So that takes and tightens up all the short screws all the way around. Make sure we have a nice tight seal to the ceiling. As you can see here, everything is it's up there nice and tight. So as I went around, you know, I said we had short screws and long screws. So we'll kind of recap here. We have short screw here, 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 one here, one here. And then there's basically one in the center of this filter area. So remember I mentioned the long screws go where the filter sits. So that's these four long ones here. And you can see here, that filter slides over these eyes, okay? Locks into place like this and just slips in. And that's where the four longer ones go. So as a reference, just hold the filter up there. And that kind of shows you where everything goes into place. So now that we have the base plate all screwed up into place, uh, before we put the filter in, we're gonna tape this center baffle to the base plate itself. Because again, we don't want this baffle here to move or leak or blow out. So uh, I find the easiest thing to do is just take a couple pieces, just go vertically across like this. If you want to go across the whole thing like that, that's fine. Um, again, don't be shy with the tape. We just want a, a really good seal. And we're gonna go all the way across. Sometimes this could hang down a little bit, just push it up a little bit so it's, it's straight across. Uh, you want it nice and flat. Going across.
Don't forget about the corners. You can have a possible leak in the corners. And if you really wanted to, you can go a step further and you can tape this all the way around if you really want to. Uh, again, we want all the air to go through the filter. So any air gaps, they can go all the way around. That's totally up to you. You can finish it all the way around if you'd like. Um, and that way you know for sure that all the air is going through that filter. So once that's all taped up, we're gonna grab the filter. The filter is installed with the coarse side down. There's a coarse side and a fine side, and it might be a little harder to see, but this is the coarse side. Flip it over, you can see it's fine. There's also a hard plastic frame on here, so that way that filter actually stays in place and doesn't blow around. Uh, in this particular case, the plastic frame actually goes up too flat to that base plate, so we get a good nice seal. So again, go through the eyelets, keyholes here, slide into place, and then you can snug these four up. You don't have to tighten them up tight, or super tight I should say, but you just want to snug them up. Uh, so really all it's doing is holding that filter in place. For cleaning this filter, uh, you can obviously just, uh, you can just vacuum it at this point. If you want to loosen up the four screws, you can actually take it down, wash it, uh, and then reuse it. Just don't use it wet. Um, as we're installing this, uh, you'll notice the orientation of this. We're, you know, air intake is always forward. Uh, so one of the questions I get, well, how we know which way is the air intake and, and what and whatnot. So the easy way to do, if you look at, on the base itself, I have an arrow on here, and it says arrow to the rear. So that'd be pointing to the rear of the RV. Uh, same thing with the cover. Actually, we have an arrow on it that says arrow to the rear of the RV. So that gives you all the orientation of which way everything goes. Uh, if you notice, as we're putting all this together, we have this material here and in the cover. Uh, what this is, is actually sound absorbing materials that will change the high frequencies and uh, absorb those, uh, the noise that we don't like to hear. And uh, that's what that's there for. Um, you, you know, it's gonna get dirty as the, as the unit's being used because the filter's right here. Uh, just dust it off, you don't have to vacuum it. A little dirt, it's not hurting, just knock the, the dust off basically and you're fine. Uh, it's not hurting anything because nothing is going up into the AC, it all has to go through uh, the filter. So next we're gonna do is we're gonna install the cover. Again, arrow to the rear. Um, this particular cover, you can not not. You can put it up here like this, but your holes won't line up. Um, the holes will disappear. Uh, they're actually keyed, so it only fits one way, okay? So what we're gonna do is line this up. The nice thing is a nice snug fit, so I can actually push it up, and I'm pretty much hands-free from here on out. Uh, once I get it pushed up, now I can come across the sides here and start putting screws in. Again, you, you'd want to start these either by hand, would be the best thing to do, or a screwdriver. Um, as you're starting them, because you are actually going into a, what they call a, a riv nut. Uh, the purpose of riv nuts is it's actually a permanent fixture, um, so you don't have to worry about things wearing out. Um, reason why you want to start them by hand uh, is so you don't cross thread them. So go ahead and get them all, all started. And uh, I'll go ahead and push the cover up, and now you can snug these up. Not tight, just bring them up. All it's doing is holding the cover in place. And repeat on the other side. Same thing here, just get them started with your fingers. Question comes up every once in a while, well, what happens if I drop a screw and you lose it? Well, take the other screw, go to a hardware store and you get any replacement screw you want. Uh, nice thing is, is there's no plastic to break, uh, pieces to lose and stuff like that. It's an easy replacement that any hardware store has. And it works with three screws. And that completes the installation of the RVAC silencer. Now if you notice that um, the filter was up here. Now your air intake's over here. So the whole design of this is actually take the air in through the cover and then up into the air conditioner. Same way as the sound. The sound's gonna come out of the air conditioner and it has to travel through the cover and come back out here. But remember, if I showed you that sound absorbing materials that were in there, that is there to soak up that sound. So right now we're gonna start up the uh, air conditioner and see what kind of results we have. Um, 
typically what happens, a lot of uh, RVers will call me up and say, you know what, you know, we had airflow before, and we're gonna actually open these vents up, and uh, um, they say, you know, we know we had extra airflow because we had some dust coming out of our vents when we started up the first time. Poof. <laughs> and we got some debris coming out of our ductwork. Uh, you can actually hear the debris running down the ductwork. Uh, ceiling fan's turning on its own. Oh yeah, we got good airflow right here. Definitely. And we're in a fifth wheel. So this is actually taking all the air from the rear and pushing it forward into uh, the master area. Did you have airflow before? No, did not. Very little airflow? <laughs> so, so as you can see, um, we can increase airflow uh, if the ductwork can handle it. Uh, and when we're up in there, you saw that all the, you know, the maintenance needed to be done up in that, uh, that AC unit. And by transitioning and making and spending that extra time to do that, uh, it does make a difference in airflow. But the filter really is what does the job. We get to take that foam filter and we get rid of that foam filter. Foam filter, as soon as you get dirt on it, it collapses with the airflow going through that and that's a blocks off airflow. Uh, with the electrostatic filter, we don't have those issues. It won't, it won't collapse. Uh, it still allows airflow, even that filter's fully loaded. We just don't quiet the AC. We make a better filtration system. Let's fall in love with your AC again. Um, as you're going through this installation, uh, you run into any questions, comments. Uh, I know there's some things you get you throw in a curveball sometimes you get into as you've seen today as we went through this. Um, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we're there for your help. Uh, we are 100% USA based. So you can go to our website, wackleproducts.com.